Good afternoon and welcome to St. Michael the Archangel Church in Bridgeport, Connecticut. We celebrate today the Vigil Mass to the Solemnity, the Ascension of the Lord. Today the Mass intention is we pray for repose of the soul of Helena Dobkowska. The intention is requested by Katarzyna Zyskowska. As you see, everything is prepared for the First Communion tomorrow. Twelve kids, twelve young parishioners will receive their First Communion and may I ask you to keep them and their families in your prayers. Everything is beautiful, prepared and also the liturgy. So tomorrow the Holy Mass of First Communion will be celebrated at 1 p.m. and will be live streamed also on Facebook. I have one important word here from our Bishop Caggiano uh, regarding the new guidelines uh, for the return of the Masses and everything that is actual now in our Church. Bishop Frank Caggiano had issued guidelines for the return to Mass now that the state's free diocese have called Catholics back to in-person Mass beginning next weekend with the Vigil Mass of the Solemnity of Pentecost. Our bishop lifted the dispensation from the Sunday Mass obligation that was put in place last March to safeguard lives during the pandemic time. It is time for us to come home. It is time for us to come together as a family of faith. The obligation to come to Mass uh, rises and finds its fulfillment in love, said the bishop who made a fervent and heartfelt appeal to everyone to come home, to join the sisters and brothers who are already worshipping in person, to come home and to come to Christ and to allow him to feed you with his body, blood, soul and divinity. The new diocesan guidelines are meant to answer the question of the large number of people who are expected to return to in-person Mass over the coming weeks and to clear up any confusion about what to expect. Among the highlights of the new guidelines, parishioners will no longer have to register for Mass and all pews will be available for sitting because social distancing will no longer be required by the state. However, in our church, one part, this part of the church, will be left with distancing of every second pew as now for those who wish to keep the social distancing. The bishop also made it clear that those who are already sick, who need to quarantine, who have other serious health conditions and their caretakers are excused from the obligation. Now that pandemic restrictions are being lifted throughout the state of Connecticut and given that many of our parishioners have been vaccinated, it is my hope that those who have not been coming to Mass will now be returning to in-person worship. We heard also about new rules in the state of Connecticut uh, with wearing face masks, so we are not, uh, it is not more required to um, wear the face mask outside and still in the church. I know it will be, um, it will be different maybe in one week, but for today it is still the obligation to wear the face masks during the liturgy in the church. And in one week we are not more obligated to wear the face masks outside the church. So these are the new guidelines. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I think it's very clear and everything can be also read on the homepage of the Diocese of Bridgeport our homepage and our Facebook site. So if we know somebody who would like to attend the Mass, please invite him in my name as pastor. Everybody is welcome to come back home, to come back to the worship in person in our Holy Liturgy. Let us prepare our hearts now that we might participate in this most holy sacrifice of the Mass.
Men of Galilee, why gaze in wonder at the heavens? This Jesus whom you saw ascending into heaven will return as you saw him go. Alleluia. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, at the beginning of this Holy Mass, let us acknowledge our sins. Let us prepare our hearts to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth is the people of good Glory to God in the highest, and on earth is the people of good Bless you, we bless you, we are. 
rejoice with devout thanksgiving, for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation, and to where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in a hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I, did, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intensely at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones? And what is surprising greatness of his power for us who believe in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and domination, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into the whole world and proclaim the Gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, today, in the Liturgy of the Word, in the readings, we hear something special. The first reading was from the beginning of the Acts of Apostles. And the Gospel was the reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In both lectures, we hear about the ascension of the Lord, that the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, to the disciples, was taken up or lifted into heaven. And we know the Gospel, in the Bible, after the Gospel, we have the Acts of Apostles. So when this is the conclusion, and there is the beginning, this is just like one story, continuous story. 
the gospel and its conclusion is immediately the beginning of the Acts of, of the Apostles. And the Acts, this is the story about the beginning of the church. So we see already the ascension of the Lord 40 days after the resurrection. This is the beginning of the church. The, be the beginning of new life of this faith community. And back to the disciples and their feelings. We can imagine after the resurrection, as the Lord came to them through the closed doors and showed them their hands and feet, their womb, his wounds, it was a big joy for them. After all the sufferers and pains of the cross, after his death and tomb, he came alive to them. They enjoyed his presence. The joy was so big, they couldn't believe. We know the story about St. Thomas. I can't believe until I see him, until I touch him. So the joy was very big, it was great. And now after 40 days, he will be lifted up into heaven they will stay completely alone again. When we try to imagine how they felt, it can be very sorrowful, because a farewell, saying goodbye to a person whom we love, who is very dear to us, is very difficult. And here again, for the second time, they have to leave Jesus, or he left them. But Jesus said, it is good for you that I go. Because if I wouldn't go, the Holy Spirit wouldn't come. So the ascension of the Lord is the beginning of the life of the church. Because the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, who gives life, he will come. And we see, my dear brothers and sisters, the ascension of the Lord is just like a bridge between the resurrection and the Pentecost. In one week we celebrate the Pentecost and it will be just like the finish, the last day of the Easter time. Our Lord Jesus Christ is lifted up into heaven. This is just like a sign for us, the direction, the bridge for you and me. When we hear St. Anthony with his sermons, he describes our earthly life as a bridge. This is just like a bridge which connects two sides of the river. And we are walking on this bridge from this life to the eternal life of God. So when we see, when we interpret the ascension as a bridge, it can be a very helpful sign for you and me. Because our Lord Jesus Christ, He shows us, He goes back to heaven, but He will stay with us in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit which is life and gives life for the whole church. Without the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't have any sacraments. Without the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't have the Eucharist, the Holy Communion. In Holy Spirit, we can hear, listen to the words of God, to the readings, and celebrate together. Therefore, back to the word of our Bishop, Franca Giano, I like this one sentence. It is time for us to come home. It is time for us to come together as a family of faith. Have you ever thought about it? That the church is like your home, spiritual home, a place when you meet the living God in his word and in his sacrament. The ascension of the Lord shows us 
Jesus is lifted up to heaven, but he will stay with us in his word and in his holy communion. Therefore, it is so important to pray for our first communion kids, that they discover how important it is to build my life on the rock with Jesus in everyday life. My dear brothers and sisters, let us celebrate this Holy Mass today with great joy. Because Jesus will come to us in his Holy Communion, his body and blood, soul and divinity, to nourish us, to lead us, and to stay with us. This is the biggest blessing that our Mother Church has, the presence of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken for the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptist for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith in the name of Jesus, raised from the dead according to the scriptures, we present our needs to the Father. Lord, hear our prayer. For local and national leaders, may the Spirit of God move them to work together to protect the rights of all, including the young woman. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have wandered away from their faith in Jesus, may God grant them understanding and a yearning heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For family and friends during this Easter season, May it be a time of witness, growth, and harmony. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they enter into the eternal life promised through Christ's resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers. And in your mercy, fill us with what we need to do your work. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, whose only begotten Son, our High Priest, is seated ever living at your right hand to intercede for us, grant that we may approach with confidence the throne of grace and there obtain your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens, as the angels gazed in wonder, mediator between God and man, Judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. So Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Frank, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you 
the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, our Lord, placed at the right hand of your glory our weak human nature, which he had united to himself, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, o Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through the participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, 
may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servant, Helena, and all who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, O sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen.
Because the Lamb of God, behold, the who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter, but only say the word, and my soul
cu care sunt simți spurământă că te auzi, de numele temporale în viață, nu vizei mai de un sânt. Christ, offering a single sacrifice for sins, is seated forever at God's right hand. Alleluia. Let us pray. May the gifts we have received from your altar, O Lord, kindly in our hearts a longing for the heavenly homeland and cause us to press forward, following in the Savior's footsteps, to the place where for our sake he entered before us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, a Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>